Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And this is question number five from the specimen paper for the Pure Mathematics P3 International A-Level um, Cambridge 9709 um, exam. This is a question here about integration. And it's part B of a question number five. Part A was answered in a separate video. It was to do differentiation. And we had to show that when we differentiate this expression, this is what we get. And I've written this, or I've copied this on this, um, next to this question, because it could be that we use a previous answer in this answer. As you can see, there could be some link between them. So that's why I've copied that result that was given in part A that we had to show in part B. Now here we have a case where we have to integrate between the limits of 0 and root 3, the product of two functions which are not related in terms of one being a function inside the other function. It's not like the case of, uh, you know, inside this function, what you differentiate gives you what's multiplying the function. So it's not the case of something like where you have a function inside another function, okay, multiplied by the differential of that function inside it. That's a case where we could reverse the chain rule. Um, but in this case, we cannot do that. Or some people call it, you can, so, like a special case of using substitution. But um, in this case, what we can do is we can use integration by parts. Okay, now integration by parts is basically where you choose one of these to be your, um, you, you, you choose one of these two products to be something that you differentiate. And the other product you choose something to, to that you're going to integrate. Okay, now the part that you choose to differentiate is normally something which breaks down easily as you differentiate it. In this case, that would be x if there was something here that we had which we could um, integrate. Okay, but we don't know how to integrate inverse tan of x. If we go to our, from our knowledge of, of, of math so far, we don't have the integral of the inverse of tan of x. Okay, we don't have that. We have the differential of tan of x, which we used in the previous part of the question. But for the um, uh, for the different for the integral of um, the inverse tan of x, we don't have it. Okay, so we know how to differentiate the inverse tan of x, as I said. But we don't know how to integrate it. Okay, so we can use. Um, I mean, we ha we have no choice here but to use the inverse tan of x as our part that we differentiate. Okay, now the integration by parts formula is given to us in the formula sheet. And this is it here. So the integral of u dv dx dx is equal to uv minus the integral of v times du dx dx. This is given to us in the formula sheet. So basically, we have to choose something we call u, which is the thing that we differentiate. In this case, it has to be the inverse of tan of x. We don't have any choice. Okay, and something we have to call dv dx, which is the thing we have to integrate, well, that has to be x. Okay, so that's um, the first step here. Now, um, when we differentiate um, the inverse of tan of x, Okay, we get dv, d, uh, if we differentiate the inverse of tan of x, we get du dx. And that's going to be um, 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, that's the differential of the inverse of tan of x. And I can show you that. Okay, from here we have the function and the differential. This is from the formula sheet. So we can see the inverse, the, the, the uh, differential of the inverse of tan of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, 1 over 1 plus x squared, so we, we know that. And we can see that v is going to be the integral of x, which is x squared over 2. So now we can apply the formula. As I said, this is the formula here. Okay, it's given to us in the formula sheet. So the integral of our expression x times inverse of tan x with respect to x between the limits of 0 and root 3 is going to be given by uv. So you multiply these two together which is going to be a half x squared times the inverse of tan x minus, minus, and as you see, see from the formula sheet, minus the integral of v du dx. So minus the integral of these two multiplied. So minus the integral of 
it's going to be what I'm going to do here. I'm going to write this as a half because you got a half as a co constant, and then it'll be x squared times one over one plus x squared, which will give you x squared over one plus x squared dx. And this is where it's important for us to look at our result from before. Our result from before told us when you differentiate x minus the inverse of tan x, you get x squared over one plus x squared. And here you've got to integrate x squared over 1 plus x squared. So if differentiating goes from there to there, then integrating does the opposite. So we can use the answer from the previous question, and sometimes it would be kind and say hence, meaning using your answer from part A. Okay, hence, okay, or it says use the answer from part A, or it says hence, sometimes it says that. In this case, it doesn't say that, but you should, when you see this, you should recognize that in the previous part of the question, we had to find that the differential of something gives us that that means the integral of this must be what we started with in the beginning so that will help us now and we have our limits i'll just write the big brackets here zero and root three you don't have to write that to the end really but i just like to do that so now we have um basically this is a half x squared times the inverse of tan x and you got minus a half times and then you're going to have this which is x minus the inverse of tan x okay and all of that we got to use the limits from 0 to root 3 okay so now hopefully when I substitute the value of root 3 and 0 into here I should get what we get there I'll just get rid of these now as I don't need them anymore okay so now we're going to um, yeah, we can substitute the values in now, no problem. So you have a half times, and there's going to be root 3 squared times the inverse tan of root 3 minus a half times root 3 minus um, the inverse tan of root 3. Okay, and all of that, let me just get rid of this. Subtract from this when you put 0 into here. Well, that's going to become zero, and you put zero into here, you're going to have, that will be zero, and that will also be zero, so that will also be zero. So you're going to end up with zero. Take away zero, because the tan, inverse tan of zero is zero. That's going to be zero, so the whole thing will be zero. That will become zero, so the whole thing becomes zero. Okay, so we're just left with this part. So it's going to be root three squared is three, so that's three over two. Now, the inverse tan of root three, you can use a calculator for that. You can also th remember our right angle, our um, isosceles triangle that we cut in half. In which case it has length two that becomes two that becomes one that becomes root three this is 60 degrees which is pi over three um, and we can see that the tan of root three is going to be opposite of a uh, opposite of adjacent for that's going to be for 60 degrees for pi over three that's three over two times pi over three if you're not sure what i did there no problem you can just put your take your calculator and you can make sure that you're in radian mode and you can just put inverse tan of root 3 and it will give you exactly pi over 3. Okay, so that's pi, a third pi, pi over 3, same thing. Minus, and this is going to be a half times root 3, which is root 3 over 2. And minus a half times and plus, that's going to be plus. Um, that's going to be inverse tan, the same thing, plus pi over, that's a half times pi over 3. Um, so it's going to be a half times pi over 3. I'll write it like that for now. Okay, so this is going to give you, um, they cancel out. So it's going to be pi over 2 plus, and that's a half times uh, pi over 6. One second. Yeah, pi over, pi over 6 and minus root 3 over 2. So what does this give us? You have pi over 2 plus pi over 6. That's going to be um, 3 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 minus root 3 over 2. That's 4 pi over 6 minus root 3 over 2, which gives you 2 pi over 3 minus root 3 over 2. And is that what we wanted? 2 pi over 3 minus root 3 over 2. Good. That's the same as saying root 3 over 2 is the same as saying a half pi. So just write it in the same format that they wanted us to have it in. Two-thirds pi 
write it in the same format. Well, I've written here is the same thing, but just to put it in the same format. So that's two thirds of pi minus a half times root three. Okay, that's exactly what we had to show. And there is the answer to this question. So in this question, really, we had to have our wits about us and use the answer from the previous part. So sometimes they don't say hence. So you have to be careful. All right? Sometimes they would say hence, meaning they're giving your, they're bringing your attention to the previous part of the question. In this case, there's no hence there. All right? So you've got to keep your wits about you. Now, there's an alternative method of um, integrating by parts which is called using the DI method. Now, in this particular case, it really doesn't make any difference at all, okay? Because once you've got to this stage here, then you have to do the same thing. Recognize this is going to be integrated in the same way. If you try to go further than this, it's going to be really complicated, right? So you need to recognize that you can do, to do that. So in this case, the DI method really doesn't really have much advantage. You'll end up with exactly the same thing. You'll have... This is your um, I, this, is, this would be your D, and this would be your I. And then basically, you'd do this times this. And then you'd recognize when you multiply these two together, you get something that looks like what was there. So then minus the integral of this times that. So it would be the same thing. It would be, be exactly the same thing using the DI method. So I'm not going to bother going through that for this particular case, um, because it's basically the same thing in the end. All right, so there's the answer there for question number five, part B. I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist, which will appear in the top right corner of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions dealing with integration um, from P3, you can find in this playlist over here. Integration by parts specifically, you can find uh, in the playlist over here from P3 of um, Edexcel. And you will be able to see integration by parts from my um, Edexcel collection. I'll put a link for that over here. Okay, so you can um, see lots of other examples from Edexcel as well, which are kind of similar. Um, so anyway, that uh, wraps up this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.